Good morning and welcome to First Baptist Highland, Texas. Y'all glad to be here this morning? Now let's give the round of applause because I'm glad to see you here this morning. I want to say welcome to all of you that are here in attendance. If you have not recently filled out a guest information card, you'll find those in the back of the chair right in front of you. Simple little card. Also a place for prayer requests on the back by guests as well as our members. And I would simply ask, if you're a guest of ours and you haven't filled out one of these, we would love for you to do that. And a few moments later on in the service, uh, there'll be a time where we continue to worship through the giving of our tithes and offerings. Guests, if you'll take this card and bring it up to one of our offering stands, two here at the front or two at the back, that would be an incredible coming. Uh, we love you for joining us this morning. That's a special Sunday where we honor our graduating seniors of the year 2021, if you can believe that. And I could not think of a better way to begin this service this morning by asking your former pastor, Randy Evans, whose boys are graduating uh, this year as well. Thank you, Randy, for agreeing to come. Julianne, thank you for coming, the boys and, and other family members. And, and I know that it's going to be an incredible time of just celebrating the accomplishments of our seniors from Holland High School this morning. So, Randy, I'm going to ask you to come to the pulpit, have a scripture reading. Randy, hey, thank you. It's good to be with you this morning. Thank you so much, uh, Frank, for offering this opportunity to me. And uh, enjoy being back here with you. Thank you also for honoring our boys. Uh, that's very special. Appreciate you being willing to do that. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Psalms, Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3. And I'm going to ask if you would to stand with me this morning in honor and reverence for God's word as I read Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose, life does not, whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does, prospers. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you so much for this wonderful day. Father, an opportunity to gather with your people in your house to offer our worship to you. Lord, may our worship be indeed a sacrifice of praise to you. May you find it uh, pleasing this morning. Lord, we thank you for this special day as uh, First Baptist Church of Holland recognizes a few of the seniors. And Lord, we pray especially for them this morning. We pray, Father, that you would uh, bless these three young men. Pray that they would uh, take these words that we've read from your word to heart. Father, that they truly would just live their lives for you, Father, that they would be found faithful to you each day. Father, we pray that you would that you would just be pleased with all that goes on here this morning. May the words of our heart and meditation of our mind be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, First Baptist Church Holland. We are so glad that you joined us this morning for worship and thank you again to our seniors in attendance now it's time for today's need to know first of all church don't forget that next sunday at 5 p.m we do have our baccalaureate service again honoring our graduating seniors also don't forget that today after church 
we do have another fundraiser for our camp. So, we are going to be fundraising by having a silent auction and bake sale. Thank you so much to those that have brought stuff, and we can't wait to see you guys in the fellowship hall after service this morning. Finally, do not forget about VBS coming up June 6th through the 9th from 5.30 to 8 o'clock. It is going to be such a fun time, but also don't forget that we are going to have an all-church cookout and game night on Sunday, June 6th. You guys are not going to want to miss it, and we can't wait to kick this event off. That's what you
This morning, you can be seated. It is uh, quite the privilege. Let me uh, this for just a moment. It is quite the privilege of being here this morning and recognizing our seniors. And I want you to know that uh, they are coming off. Our seniors, in fact, uh, some of them I just found out had some incredible, incredible baseball games last night. Right. All right, guys, yeah. Yes, sir. It looks as though uh, some more baseball is in the store. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Holland Hornet, for continuing to play. And uh, we're going to be following you and continue to pray. This morning, and uh, All right, and we thought we might take you on a trip back through memory lane. So pay close attention to the screen this morning. If I told you my story, you would hear hope that wouldn't let go. And if I told you my story, you would hear love never gave up. And if I told you my story,
confused. All right, I won't, we won't give you that one. We've got a new one for you. And I want you to know it's a little bit different than the senior Bible I got uh, right here. In fact, in the front of my senior Bible, it says, congratulations, senior. It's kind of hard to read because, you know, it's gotten wet a few times in my hip pocket and on the deer stand and a few things like that, right? Congratulations, senior. May God continue to bless you. Psalm 3, 5, and 6, First Baptist Church of Stewart, Florida, June 9th, 1874. No, that can't be right. I don't think I'm that old, but anyway, you get the message. This has been an incredible Bible, by the way. I don't make fun of it. I am very proud of it, but folks, what I'm here to say, and uh, Josh and Caleb and Nathan, uh, this is a Bible that you will be able to use that I believe will draw you closer and closer to who God is as he describes himself in his word. So thank you for being here this morning, and thank you for your willingness to come and share a part of your as we just heard on the song, a part of your story uh, with this church and this community. Because this community is not going to forget about you after today. You're a viable part of this community, no matter where you go. And no matter what it is that God chooses to do with you, uh, you will be remembered, and you will be prayed for, and you will be loved. So thank you for being here. I've asked the Shane Downing, superintendent of schools, to come this morning and uh, read your names out as we present you with this copy of the Word of God. Sisters, if you'll just come, what I'd like to ask you to do, come here, I'll present you with your Bible, shake your hand, all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to ask you just to stand right over here to this side, okay, until we get all of those done. And that would be great. Mr. Shane? I do get to add a few words. You can uh, add whatever. You can preach, brother. I mean, I'll give you my time. So be well, I, I, I will say I have a unique perspective uh, with these three young men. Um, I've been around in many, many years. I was their elementary principal going up and, um, and then also got to see them grow in the church. And so just for those that are listening online or those that are here today, in our community um, yes they've been leaders in the church and um, they've been leaders in the classroom they've been leaders on many many different athletic fields um, they're going to be dearly missed all three of them provide uh, things for our district um, in our community that are hard to replace um, and that's a testament to the families to the character of who they are and uh, what they've become over time so it's it's been a joy to get to see them from this little bitty um, to where they are today. Many, many uh, uh, good memories um, and know that there's gonna be great things ahead of them. Um, the, the hard work and the type of kids that these guys, or shouldn't say kids, they were kids, young men, um, have become, you know, there, there's just the sky's the limit for these guys and uh, we're gonna get to, get to hear Josh Evans, come forward. Y'all don't have to get up to the mic to speak because none of the three of y'all would ever want to do that. And Aiden Tomasi.
Dear God, uh, we want to thank you so much that we got to gather here together. And God, we thank you for these seniors. We pray that God, as they go out into this world, God, wherever they plan on going after graduation, that God, you use them as a life. And that their story is a part of your story. And God, that we praise you, that we get to praise you every single Sunday and every single day of our lives. We love you and we pray for these young men. In Jesus' name, amen. We present to you the class of 2021 Holland High School. Amen. Thank you, guys. And it's been a privilege to watch a few of their ball games. Obviously, COVID kind of bit into some of that, uh, but it's uh, these guys are leaders and they are already winners. And there's a father in heaven that's watching from above. I want to invite you to stand and worship as we present our praise to the good, good father. stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard a tender whisper of love. That's wonderful. Uh, the, if you did not get a chance to do that, you 
your tithes and offerings, but you've been faithful in giving your time. And I know there's still this sense of that we're not all back uh, to church yet. I think as we see the nation and even the world opening up, I think, I think it's safe to say oh, we can be back. We can be back, and that's why I'm excited about Vacation Bible School right around the corner. I'm excited about the thing that we all love to do, and that's fellowship and eat. Miss Jerry and I have been talking about it. it's time to eat, right? That's right, and we're about to do that on June 6th. Hamburgers and hot dogs and games outside, and it's just going to be good to do the things that we in church and churches have been used to doing for a long, long time. So we're excited about what's going to happen. right uh, if you go to uh, the Facebook page for our kids ministry you'll see another video from the week before so I appreciate Melinda Grossclose our our children's minister and and some of the ladies you know Nikki and and so many others and I'm not going to mention all their names because I'll forget some but I'm gonna ask Melinda if she will come and uh, lead us in a time of prayer not only for vacation Bible school but just the privilege of being in God's house worshiping together. Melinda, thanks for all you do. And if there's anything else we need to know about VBS, now's your moment. Hit us. I was going to take it, so thank you. Go, go for it. <laughs> um, if you guys are, if anybody wants to help out with Vacation Bible School, we need some, we need a lot of people out reading. Whenever uh, the parents drop the students off, it'd be great if we could have people interacting there and uh, engaging them um, when they pick up, when off and when they pick up so um just a simple thing like that you could do without even having to but we still have lots of space to fill up so um we have leaders that are, are taking over specific spots and they need helpers in their spots so if you want to help out let me know they, we didn't roll credits on that but uh corey hall is the one who wrote that script <laughs> That was a lot of fun. She has a lot of energy. So Nikki and uh, Lindley also are awesome. So we're just coming up with all kinds of great ideas. They're like so energetic and thinking about what this place is gonna look like for this archeological dig. great time here in the sanctuary we'll have some balls we're tossing around and everything we're getting engaged the kids to see who who can bring the most um missions money girls or boys if the boys win then they can put a pie in my face if the girls win they can put a pie in thomas's face so we do have some extra incentive for them there so we're gonna have a lot of fun at 545 we're gonna dig right in we're gonna do our pledges we're gonna sing our theme songs and all of that so definitely those of you online we're open 
come on down. We need you guys here. It's going to be a great time. We're also going to offer van ministry to pick up um, children around the community. If you know anybody who can't make it, we'll be in the apartments for sure each night. So whatever it takes. We also with people to actually lots of different areas you can help out with that even if you're not you don't feel called into children's ministry like to work with specifically work with children we have a lot of extra stuff you can do that doesn't require hands-on with the kids okay all right thank you let us pray father god you are a good good father you are almighty god you are just everything to us and you have provided everything for us lord and as we as we gave of our tithes and offerings lord we know that we it's a sacrifice for us because we feel like yeah we could do something else with that money lord but we know that if we give it to you just that little bit of what you've given us we know that it will be a blessing and lord we do pray that you'll bless that which we have given already today lord and vacation bible school is coming up and lord this is the way for us to really touch a child's life lord we just ask that you will um work in the mind to be here at vacation bible school and they will act on that and father god we just thank you so much for the opportunity to be here to worship you this morning to love you to show our love to offer you all that we have from our hearts our minds and our souls we love you we thank you for jesus christ our risen lord and savior it's in his name i pray amen
I want you to grab your Bibles. If you have your Bibles with you, if not, there's one under the chair right in front of you. Feel free to take that if you need a copy of God's Word. I don't think our seniors will need to take that because they've got one of their own this morning. But this Word of God, this Word of God this morning is a little bit about what we're going to speak on this morning. Here's what I want you to understand. I'm going to set a scene for you. The scene is like this. I have a, I had a, a grandmother whose name was Dada in North Louisiana. And Dada was a fun-loving woman. I mean, she was incredibly fun-loving. Everything she did, she did with a smile on her face. smile. Folks, that is a gift to be able to do that. So that's the scene I want to set for you because what you need to understand is be very careful, seniors. Be very careful about what you say around people because as I was told when I got here and as I've been told in every church I've been in, regardless of the size, you can't talk about them because you don't know who's related to them. You don't know if they're related or not. Well, in a community the size of Holland, wow. Years back in North Louisiana, and I was actually serving a church in North Louisiana at the time in Shreveport. And it was a fairly large church. I wasn't too worried about uh, finding anybody that was related to Dada at that point in time. I just went over to Minden, preached her funeral, saw the family. It's like we had a family reunion, you know, that sort of thing. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. It was so good to see the aunts and the uncles and the cousins that, that we used to fight all the time, guys. Y'all understand that? We just, we just fought like cousins because we were all boys and that's what we're supposed to do now. We had cousins but I let them fight with my sisters right I kind of left Karen and that bunch alone but now Bruce and Ronnie oh we would we would have some good times and if we were at Dodo's house we thought I would always just let us go I mean she wasn't gonna stop us that was her moms and dad to try and keep us from wrecking the place right A big fellowship meal, serving several hundred people in a big banquet hall, seated about a thousand. We had a full blown, it was a full meal deal. It was uh, better than McDonald's. We were not a few fries short of a happy meal. Everybody was happy most every Wednesday night because we had cooks, we had a full service kitchen. I mean, it was all you could eat for five bucks and it was incredible. So I was making sure the cooks were lined up, and that was part of my responsibilities, and I was making sure everything was in order for what needed to happen. And as I'm walking down the hall to go grab something out of the office, one of the ladies that served, served every week, and she was one of those ladies that would make fun of everybody, and everybody would make fun of her, and she was just always cackling and know her by her name Dada because that was just a few of us that did that oh Frank I'm so excited we're cousins don't you tell anybody that we are cousins it's got to be like fifth or sixth or 23rd cousin or something like that I've never seen you before in my life until I got to this church we just got to be careful about what you say around people and Dada was one of those and we're going to get to the scripture in just a minute it's very applicable applicable to what I'm about to say. Dada was one of those that we loved to have fun. And I remember my sophomore year of high school, traveling from South Florida to North Louisiana with the family, the sisters and me and mom and dad and
the old home place is just like what you would imagine it. Not a modern style brick house, but when it got really, really cold, and it did that weekend, <clears throat> ice was forming in the windows. All right, Rex, they were a few uh, R values short on their insulation. All right, that's all I'm going to tell you. Like a lot of R values short on insulation. But that was the old home place. That's where we all wanted to be. Well, this particular night was TV night in Dottles, did her living room area. It's kind of a small place, but we all packed in there like sardines. And me and Bruce and Roddy, my cousins, were all on the floor, just laid out on the floor, laughing and joking, having a good time, waiting for the popcorn and whatever else, hot chocolate. We were waiting for whatever TV show Dotto owned the TV. Dotto owned, had there been a remote, there wasn't, but Dotto would own it. And so we're waiting for Dotto to come in, and she comes in, sits down, Now, we're not talking about Roman Greco wrestling like you see in the Olympics. We're talking about George George, Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant. This is back in the 70s, all right? This, these are the heroes of the day, and everybody's in their place. Everybody's in their seat, except on the sofa. There's two places, a three-seat sofa, and there's only one person sitting there. And it's Dotto. And nobody else is sitting there. Everybody's crowded and sitting on the floor. And Dad walks in from the kitchen, my dad, my fighter pilot dad. My dad that saw black and white and nowhere the color. And he looks around. And had I been in a chair, he... So he did what every other person would do. He just went. He's so happy to be there. He sat down by Dotto. And about 10 minutes into that wrestling contest, when her favorite wrestler was getting thrown around, Dad found out why nobody sat by Dotto. Because next thing I know, Dad's screaming and hollering because Dotto's got him. Dotto's got him in a headlock, and she beat him on the head. Now, I want you to know the rest of us were dying. We were laughing. I was having so much fun watching my dad get whipped by my grandma. And I mean, there was nothing he could do. It was a total, you know, it was a total blind shot. So we laughed like crazy. Daughter, even though I wasn't raised around her, I would catch Dada with a Bible in her hand or one open on the kitchen cabinet. Story after story I could tell you. But as Randy read this morning from Psalm chapter 1, the psalmist was very clear. He said, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, stands in the way of sinners or sits in the seat of scoffers, but where is his delight? His delight is in the law of the Lord. On that law, he meditates day and night. He meditates day and night. That's the word Hadah in the original Hebrew language. And it's like an animal making guttural sounds. He meditates day and night. Day Hagah, it's this growling, it's this mm, that comes out of, even when you say the Hebrew, and if you speak in that Hebrew language, there's a lot of guttural growling anyway, but it's the same word that Isaiah used. In Isaiah 31, 4, when he said, even as a lion or a young lion growls over his prey, he's not worried, though a band of shepherds comes off the hill. And when that lion or young lion, you've, you've seen probably the National Geographic videos when the, when the lion will grab, will grab the gazelle, usually the small gazelle or the wounded gazelle, and gets them down and then just begins to munch on supper, right? For the next couple of days, and that lion won't leave. And 
over again. And what I remember is my grandmother, daughter, meditating a God over the word of God. It's that person when that happens. And seniors, when that happens to you, and when you begin to meditate and growl over the word of God, you can rest assured that success will be yours. Turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy. We're going to wrap this up fairly quickly with just a couple of things, not only for our great Israel is about to go into the time where they're going to cross over into the promised land. Moses is not going to lead them, but Joshua, his successor, will lead them. And God's trying to give them some help. He's trying to, to help them understand that you need to, to recognize when you get up to that river and you cross the river at flood stage and it was way, 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 way out of the banks. I'm going to do something miraculous, but you need to know what's waiting for you on the other side. What's waiting for you is 31 hostile enemies. 31 hostile enemies occupying a territory that belongs to you that I've already promised to you. But you have to make the decision. You've got to make the choice to go face them. And that's what you and I have to do every single day of our lives. There are enemies that want to take us down. There are enemies right now that want to take down even the nation of Israel that we are talking about right now. And I won't, I've got a lot to say about that, but not this morning. That'll be another time. But so here's what we have. We have this passage in Deuteronomy. The people of Israel are there. Moses is there about to face his empire. And here's what the Bible, here's what God said in verse 15. See, I've set before you today life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that, com that I command you today by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules, then if you do this, then you are entering to take possession of it. You see, you young men that are graduating, it's not by chance that I say, if this is what you do, then I know you'll have success. I don't make that promise. God has made that promise. And every word that God has spoken is right. Every word that God has spoken is true. Every word that God has spoken is just, and he will never relinquish his promise to you as you meditate as you take these words as you love the lord your god as you walk in his ways and as you keep his commands and his ordinances so this is what god has said to the people of israel the leaders of that day here's what i've set before you and if you do this stuff then i promise you god said I will bless you in the land that you are going to. Seniors, I don't know what the future holds for you. But I do know this, that just as was facing the Israelites, there'll be enemies facing them. And this is the weapon, sharper than any two-edged sword. Able to cut and divide soul and spirit, bone and marrow, which medical science will label can't really do. But it's sharp. Sharper than a two-edged sword. And you need that word of God to face the enemies. And God will bless you in the land, wherever that land might be. And it might be right here in Holland, Texas. I saw on Facebook last night that there was another business open. graduates a God calls you to some unknown land and know that you can flourish wherever he leads you also because here's what the deal is I noticed also in 19 or actually in, in 2019 there were 169 million people in the United States of America that said they read the Bible 
169 million. In 2020, just one year later, in a pandemic, there were 181 million that said they read the Bible. 16% of those said they read it four times a week. And those of you that have been with a while understand that a few months ago I, I kind of unpacked this, this uh, survey and these responsibilities that came out of this survey that if you read the Bible once a week, well, that's good, but there's no change. Twice a week, <laughs> it's a little better, but still no change in your actions and your behavior. four times a week, also an increase from 2019. See the enemies that we're faced. They can't stand. They can't stand against the Word of God. So here's the next thing that happened. Verse 17 of Deuteronomy chapter 30. But if your heart turns away, but if your heart turns away, you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them. I declare to you today, that you shall surely perish. You see, he said at the beginning, I told you, there's life. There's good and there's life. And there's death. And there's evil. And if you turn away from me and serve foreign gods, you shall surely perish. I declare that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land that you're going. heaven and earth, verse 19 says, against you today, that I've set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose, choose life, that you and your offspring may live loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, holding fast to him, for he is your life and length of days that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. God wants to direct your path. And so there's just three things we can leave you with today. Seniors as well as the rest of us. Three things. If we love the Lord God with all our heart and soul, and we, we even heard on the video the the, the VBS video, if you seek me with all your heart, you shall find me, the prophet Jeremiah said. So if we can seek God with all of our heart, we love him, we walk in his ways, we keep up his commands, and this is what will happen. So what's the, what is, what is the most spiritual thing you and I could ever do? It's not just to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. It's not just to follow him in baptism, a public testimony of your faith in him. It's not just to be this little Christian that we talk about that the Bible speaks of just three times in our description, but disciples many, 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 many times. It's not just to become a disciple or go make disciples, though that should be our aim, because there's lots of Christians. One of the books that's out right now is uh, talks about how a Christian can be a lost person. There's not any out there about disciples that are making other disciples following the Great Commission that are lost. We're to be followers of Jesus, and we only can do that through this. So what is the biggest, most spiritual thing we can do? It's make a choice. It's choose this day whom you will serve. It's make a choice. I don't know that I can do that, right? You might be a senior going, I got the rest of my life in front of me. Boy, I got to choose today, choose this day. I, I didn't say that. God said that. Choose this day whom you will serve. Because if you love me and you walk in my ways and you keep my commands, I don't care where you go, God says. I'm going to be with you and I will bless you. I don't know that I 
can do that. Israel didn't know either. And so these other important values came from the Lord. Verse 11, the same chapter. For this commandment that I command you today is not too hard for you. And you guys are sharp. This is not too hard. I'm just telling you it's not. Neither is it far off. It's not way off there. Something can be grasped later. It's, it's right here in front of you. The Lord is near you. The Lord is in you. It's not in heaven that you should say, who will ascend to heaven for us and bring it? I so that you can do it. That's God said. You can do it because that's where the Word of God is. It is very near you. It is in you. The Word of God. You can. You can love Him. You can walk in Him. And you can keep His Word. And you will be blessed. So today, we all have that question. Who and what will we choose? What do we choose life? Choose death. Choose blessing. of you, man, the sun has just come up, and it's shining bright on your future. You're graduating seniors, Caleb, Josh, Aiden, especially, we want you to know, and I said earlier, this church is not going to forget you. We won't. Because I see three young men that have already been described as leaders. God is in need of your leadership. Today, won't you choose him? And the rest of us will be some of those witnesses that are encouraged by your walk with the Lord. You can have an impact on this entire community by the way you live your life. I want to thank you in advance for doing that because you have been an encouragement to me already in the brief time that I have been here. And I want to thank you for that. And the rest of us, let's just remember, our charge as a church body, as a body of believers, we need to pray for them. We need to pray for our juniors, our sophomores, our kindergartners, our, our VBS kids and workers. Life is what we want to choose. Father God, thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you for being near us. And thank you for being in us. And God, I pray that as we close this service this morning, I pray, Father, that you would reveal yourself clearly to each of us. But I especially want to lift up these three young men and their family. Lord, help us support them. First by prayer, but then by any other method that you may deem necessary. We love you in Jesus' name. And here's how we're going to close this morning. I would like to ask the families, the Evans family, the Mossick's family, if y'all would come up here to the altar area, we would like to, as a church, pray over you. I know this is kind of a, a calling on you right now, but I just want you to come up and uh, stand together. Shane, can you come back to the microphone, sir? It's a great group of people right here. We are so thankful for family, your influence on these young men. 
and I know that it will not stop. And if there's anything that we as a church or I as a pastor um, can do for you in this community, please, young men, families, uh, we'll, all we need to do is know and hear about it. But thank you. And church, can we uh, give them the graduating class of 2021 one more? Uh, Stand, I'm going to ask you to close this prayer. And church, if you'll stand in honor of the Lord and in honor of these seniors and their families, and, and uh, we're not going to grab around them or rotate around them and put our hands. We'll see you. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we are just so grateful to be in your house today. Lord, to hear your words, Lord, to convict our hearts, Lord, that we would uh, make today be days, the first day that we do some things if that's not what we've been doing. And Lord, these two families have done a tremendous job of being in your word, having a family unit that uh, believes you, that focuses on you, and that strives to be better each and every day. Lord, we do ask that as the, as the family, as the, as the students leave the home and and do other things, Lord. It's still a family unit. It's all in one direction to glorify your name. And so, Lord, we just ask that you go with each of them. Provide the strength, the comfort that they will need to uh, conquer the world's daily routines that come, come to us. Lord, we know these guys are going to do a great job. And we just continue to protect them lead and guide them um, and help them meet those challenges head on, solve the problems that need to be solved and to uh, glorify your name. Lord, as we all go out into the world this week, just uh, help us to see where we're needed. Help us to uh, witness to those that we need to um, and just uh, go in your direction. I ask all these things in your son's precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you one more time. Graduating seniors. Glad to be up.